Hey friends, my name's Georgie. It's such a joy to welcome you to the Just Breathe podcast where I'll be talking all things breathing to help empower you guys to use the power of your breath to harness your bodies and minds. In today's episode, I'll be chatting to Summer Stralin. Summer is a four-time Olivier-nominated actress, yoga teacher and creator of the Stralin Collective, an online platform providing performance and wellness classes from some of the world's leading professionals. Summer was so generous in sharing her personal journey with breath and spirituality, We also got talking about the meaning of connection, especially in the midst of a global pandemic, as well as female empowerment. I'm so excited for you to listen in on this one. I think you're going to really, really enjoy it. I hope you finish listening to this and feel like an absolute goddess. I know I did. (laughs) If you haven't already, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let's keep building that strong breathing community. Let's keep connecting people. Let's keep empowering people through the most universal language there is, the breath. Without further ado, let's get right on with the conversation. This is episode 12 of Just Breathe with Summer Stralen. Hey Summer, welcome to the Just Breathe podcast. Thank you so much for coming and chatting to me. It's such a pleasure to have you here. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you. And I'm so glad that we met. um, I know. Randomly, but... um, I know. Well, hilariously, I have met you many times before, but from watching you perform, because (laughs) um, you, I think, were the first leading lady I actually saw in Top Hat. Oh um and so yeah I have I have been an admirer of, of yours from afar for a long time but to actually meet now properly and share something slightly different in sort of spiritual practices and and breathing is is something that's a really wonderful sort of full circle which is so appropriate because of course um I was at your um full moon women's circle last night which was so incredible which of course we'll talk about um but firstly where are you calling in from you're not in the UK right now right I'm in Massachusetts I was living in New York and uh, was about Mm. to do a job there right um, in April so um and I only moved in November so (laughs) I kind of feel a bit like I've cursed America (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah so it's been a year since I've been home um my goodness uh, and I mean home I I home is where the heart is it really you know I really it really is that. yeah but, but at the same time and I've never really felt like the UK was my home like my spiritual home I've that's never interesting really felt, I've always felt quite um uh, not very connected to it yeah um so and America is no different to be honest you know but I, I moved here to to see if that was if this was the grounding place but um but actually what I realized is that it's all about grounding wherever you are um, yeah, that's an interesting point, actually. You can travel wherever you want, right? But until you ground with yourself, you'll always feel a little bit lost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just, uh, speaking of that, there's actually, I just realised I've got Native American music playing in my <laughs> That's um, so appropriate. I know, right? Um, well, that is the thing, though, I am quite connected to, is that Native really? American um, culture. Um, yeah. Because we all have it you know in mm. some we're all connected in some way yeah. but um but yeah so I'm in Massachusetts staying at a friend's house who had a place to stay for me Amazing. um and um yeah staying here for for Christmas and everything which is kind of going to be strange but yeah. um, you know and everyone sort of there are a lot of people who I know who aren't going home you know or going yeah. to their families and uh yeah it, so it's we're there's a lot of people who are connected in that way now you know mm. we, we used to be connected in that you're going home for Christmas or whatever whereas now it's like we're all connected in a, on a more um uh, you know we're connected by this global pandemic you know yeah yeah the the pausing of the world right the the great pause that has actually brought about so much 
beauty, I think, really. Of course, there's been so much tragedy, but where there's dark, there's always light. And so it's it's yeah. actually brought about something quite lovely. But I want to dive in anyway and really get into your journey and sort of coming from this amazing performing family, of course, you know, um, I have been following the Stralin sisters <laughs> for years and been looking up to all of you as, as growing up as a performer as well. And so I'm sort of fascinated by how sort of being really at the top of your game in performing when the spiritual practices and yoga and came into that and, and where you are now and, and what that transition is with your journey. And I, I'm really interested to know. Well, it's, it's a long yeah. one, and you will probably talk about that <laughs> the whole podcast. But um, <laughs> I fine. feel like I have kind of I've talked about it a lot recently because yeah. of the Stralin Collective that I've set up because yeah um, because of what connection that has for me and yes basically what it is 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 that I started my sister Scarlett has always mm -hmm. been. Um, uh, an inspiration but also I mean obviously when you're growing up you're like my sister's not an inspiration you know <laughs> <laughs> um I do realize that she sort of she did inspire me mm. to do to be as good as her and to be um and she always made it look so fun right. and she started she she's always been quite spiritual we went we all went um to a convent school for our for our sort of early years from three yeah. till ten and um it was a, a convent school so there were nuns there when we were there there weren't when, right. when um the others went but um but yeah so so we did grow up doing that you know doing yeah. prayer and hymns and my my mother's quite um spiritual and quite religious yeah like, not religious but christian you know yeah and um and so I kind of shunned it for a while and I was very mm -hmm. atheist and and my sister Scarlett would was sort of into angels and yeah. and lots of self-help and Louise yeah. Hay and mm. you know um, all of and affirmations and I was like oh god you just need that because you because <laughs> you're not happy you know right right um and and then and then I met Sierra Bogus actually in Love oh. Never Dies and she gave me the power of now or she told me about the power of now right um because I hadn't been happy I had been getting jobs and doing jobs but never really being present happy in the present moment because right. from the dynasty thing um it was always striving for perfection rather wow. than rather than enjoying the moment so yeah. You know, it was, and and in the industry, in the in show business, not a lot of people do enjoy the moment because usually it's a means to an end. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this job so that I get that job, and then I'm going to get that job from that job. And actually, I think that's the the wrong mentality um, yeah. to have because it actually prevents you from one enjoying it and two doing a, a connected and present job. Yeah. So, um, that I, I I call it the, uh, the the phrase I've been using is um, I suffered with perfectionist syndrome. And <laughs> I could so I, relate to that. Yeah, I'm sure many of us can. Yeah, of course. And I mean, you know, because when you're doing ballet, for instance, mm -hmm. if you train in ballet or you train in dance or whatever, it's about training the minutia, like mm -hmm. the tiniest thing. If yeah. you just put your weight a tiny tiny bit back you'll do five pirouettes if you get it just that little bit forward you'll only do one you right. know or, or less you know so it's 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 always that striving for that perfection of can of 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 um alignment yes and and what i realized from reading the power of now was that that alignment is in the now mm. and if you're in the now you'll then you're not looking forward and you're not looking back and you're not going oh well I didn't do that pirouette you're going yeah. well I'm doing this pirouette now and I'm doing this one now and this one now and you know it then not sort of follows on to recovery and you think about one you know to 12 steps and mm. one day at a time for for addicts and it, it is that I mean it, it's actually one moment at a time really yeah yeah have to um 
have to live in mm-hmm. in order to to um to be content i believe yeah so that was the kind of thing that was 2010 wow and then it sort of grew from there um, right and then i and then i had some experiences with people mm-hmm. that i hadn't been open to before because i was very much like yeah protective and shielding because right. I didn't want to give my heart or you know yeah. show show what you're talking about this vulnerability yeah. yeah um and and in the industry um because it is a patriarchal system mm-hmm. so far yeah it's, it's changing I hope slowly <laughs> surely. yes um, because of that patriarchal system it is very much results led so unless you're giving results people don't want to know they don't they don't care they, yeah. you know and that is a that it does come from you know n- a very positive thing about the patriarchy the right. reason that men are like that is because women aren't right so we balance each other out we yeah. are nurturing we are forward thinking we're all that men are yeah. very much in the moment need to get this yeah. story on now and you know i'm i'm not obviously evolution is is a thing and we've all evolved from that but it does come back to does go back to neanderthal of us being in the cave and then being you know in that adrenaline state and yeah and how we dealt deal with those kind of states yeah um so i realized that so uh, i uh, did lots of mental help self-help stuff yeah then i also realized that it was in my actual physical health as well that right from my mental health was affecting my physical health so I had of course yeah I mean I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't uh and I'm not um aggressively got an eating disorder or whatever but you know I've had I've been through those those times of looking at my body as a different entity to my brain and to my mind and yeah. to my spirit yeah and, um, and when I sort of learnt, you know I've read many many mm, I've not read many books but the ones that I've had I have many thoughts on yes and I have many right tools from those books that I've that I take yeah. and also my it sort of given me a thirst for knowledge that I didn't have before mm. because I felt I knew everything about uh-huh. theatre because I'd been in it since I was three. Yeah. So, and and because I had that shield of like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm what I'm doing is working. So I just need to do that. Right. Actually, it just pushed me further and further down a hole of not really knowing who I was. Do you think you kind of lose sight at that point of of the root of what performing was for you in the first place? I, um, that's a good question, especially for me. And it is a very, uh, I give a different answer, I think to a lot of people and is that mm. I was never connected to that route in the first place. Mm. It was all like, you just do it. Yeah, that's what you do. And Not, so- you do it and you look this way and it's for this and it, this is what you, whereas I think my other sisters somehow especially Scarlett and Z, I think they somehow were connected to it. Mm. And I think you either are or you aren't. Yeah. Um, and so I've been actually talking to a friend recently about how I never dance for myself. Like I never do. I never, I don't enjoy it. I, because now I can't do it without that self-awareness. And, wow. it's, and it's something that I'm now going to be working on mm. in my own life of like actually yeah. trying to move my body in a way because yeah. ultimately it probably looks pretty good, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. But for me, it's still that perfectionist syndrome of like, if I'm not, if I'm, I, I just, the thought of doing it and no one watching or it, it just, it just doesn't compute for me. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been on a similar journey myself in terms of moving that I know I love to move. And I certainly lost my relationship with dance over the last few years as I converted into more of a straight acting side. But I was still moving my body. And actually, that's when I really started to dance from my core. But I was like, no, I'm not dancing. I'm just moving. I'm not doing any. I'm not dancing. I don't, mm. I don't do a single pirouette or a, a move. I'm, I'm just moving. 
but it feels right. really good. And actually, it looks a hell of a lot better <laughs> than it did when I danced because it, it it's just connected and it's it's in it's intentional in a way that I'm just so present and coming back to the analogy of ballet I suppose the best pirouette you'll ever do is when you're not trying you're not thinking right you just sort of you like one last try and you just sort of do it and then one two three four five there you are and you didn't even yeah. think because yeah. you're just trusting your core and your body and I think that's a very interesting journey especially for those in the creative industry that you're right is so results driven and there's so much rejection that you build up such a thick wall of, of that like no I I am good enough and I'm going to keep working until I prove I'm good enough because I am and I'll mm. keep doing it mm. and and then I'll keep getting chosen this being yeah. chosen it's like well what if you were already chosen right <laughs> yeah right I mean from what you were saying then it was in my in my brain I I, I have apparently I have ADD and and, <laughs> and things so my psych I have a psychiatrist who is who is totally. um, uh, diagnosed me with that so I mean I do, what a relief to to know yes absolutely it really it really is but I do mm -hmm. find it difficult to listen so I have to really actively listen yeah um, and um a, a thought that did come out of that then was that um I'm actually very connected sexually mm. so and um and it's not so much connect it's not so much sexual it's more it's more intimacy yeah um, and, and that connection between and an, with an intimate partner mm. I find very easy to get with a lot of people yeah like, not that I have lots of partners <laughs> that, but no. when I connect to people yeah I can get very deep very quickly because I yeah. enjoy that yeah so that's also why I'm like now kind of thinking about doing psychology and psychiatry you know mm. things like that because because I love it when you know and I think that's also why the industry for me sort of um uh quenched that thirst because when you are dancing on your own in front of people you're getting that exchange because if right. they would then clap and then I would get it and then it would be so it is that connection with people and then you come out of the stage door and they're like oh my god that was gorgeous and I'm like great oh my yeah. god <laughs> you know, like so it's that kind of I think it you know and and so also I I do think that art is a connective it's helping people connect to their emotions yeah and so the for the artists especially in shows it was about connecting to that community of artists that we all had this little secret that we were we were showing the you know a, each audience mm. and that's what i as a as a director that's what i do is that right. i say we all have a we have this secret and we're going to just share it with these people and this is and that's why every single show is so is so brilliant and so yeah. can be mind-blowing even if you're doing nine to five you know yeah. like not that's bad but you know yeah something that's not necessarily people like really deep things or, yeah. yeah you know like it it all can have that that magic mm. of giving to an audience and yeah and the thing with the patriarchal system being you have to stay in a contract for six, for a for a year and even if you hate it you can't leave right. <laughs> you know right. and all of that sort of thing it just doesn't work no. in my opinion it doesn't no. work for artists and mm -hmm. i have now stopped going oh i'm just in musical theater i'm going i am in musical theater where i combine dancing which is mm -hmm. created with breath I can't dance if I don't have breath right. I can't sing if I don't have breath and I can't right. act if I don't have breath if I'm not breathing at that you know at any moment we don't have life yeah. <laughs> you know and that's very important and yeah. having the ability to be able to go I'm just gonna take a moment to think about this am I yeah. having a good time no is it okay if I move on because actually someone else might come in and be like, this is the best thing that's ever happened. But right. The results driven thing of, you know, it, it has to be a year because this is the most economical thing. Right. Like, you're not, it, in the long run, it's not economical because the show won't run as long if you've got yeah. people in it who aren't enjoying themselves, who aren't breathing properly. Right. If you're in, like I've, I've been in that situation where I've been so anxious 
that I've just been like wow. this the whole time and not been able to just give. Right. Because I've been so t- protective. And, right. and that's, you know, it's all of that power of now. Yeah, of course. That's where it came from in answer to your question. Yeah. That is where it came from was like, right. oh, I'm breathing in this moment. Right, you know? right. And um, then going into the, the yoga, because of course that's a embodied breathing practice almost you know where you are moving through yeah. your body well, working with the breath exactly that was a sort of good transition I think for me because obviously having that kind of body dysmorphia thing for many many years yeah um, it was a it was a, a a nice transition um and and when I first started doing yoga I loved it because I was really good at it <laughs> compared to everybody else and and I was like you know looking you know on my mat looking at people yeah. um to be you know and and unfortunately because of results 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 yeah in the system it's now become about who can do a handstand on a mountain uh, on, a, yes. on a pencil um yeah with you know gorgeous 17 necklaces on and rings you know yes. like looking stunning instagram know. yoga right correct and that's and that takes away from the breath and the moment and the, you know, and, and it, the prana. it's an end as it, the prana, the life force. And it's, and it's, it is a means to an end because these people do want to share what they have experienced ultimately. And what yeah. you experience in yoga is a physical and mental stillness when you get it, you know, and yeah. yoga means to bring comfort and steadiness and you know and a lot of the time everyone's like you know yeah yeah <laughs> warrior too like yeah like, shaking you know, whatever it is wherever you, if, if yeah. this isn't comfortable go to the comfortable place and breathe and actually you'll find that it's easier to then go a little bit deeper and then mm. go a little bit deeper. but it's the patient you know it's about patience and and we're not taught to be patient we're taught that we should get results now I mean, in this day and age, it's it's supposed to all be instant, right? With contactless payments and with, you know, Deliveroo, everything is instant. The selective C-sections, so, right? You know, selective, like, no, I want to have my I want to have my baby on the twenty sixth because I've got. Oh, that's amazing! So so get, that's that's what it's called. That's what it's called in the in medicate in the in the medical. A selective. Um, you can do that. I didn't even know you could do that now. Selective cesarean section. Yeah. <gasps> So you get, wow. you know, but obviously right now that's not happening. No. And, um, and yeah, so, it, and I, so yeah, that's, 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 um, with my, with yoga, it, it, it has become a meditative practice for me because I don't, because it's not dancing yeah. and it's different, you know, like you're meant to be more parallel than you are in dancing and make you know like not doing a ponche you know like yeah yeah you you know putting your hip up it's all about yeah. like the it's about the health of your yeah. vessel so that you can then give what you what your light and your gift is yeah that you've been given whatever that may be even yeah. if that's you know being if that's a, being a teacher or being um, a, a monk or being you know whatever it is mm. that is your light and it's it's working out giving yourself the time and the patience to work that out with no pressure and I think that's actually what the pandemic has done for me right. yeah it's gone I've got no pressure to be I mean apart from sort of money pressures yeah I've got no pressure to be in a show because there are none and yeah. I'm like oh okay I can have a moment to just go what is it that I really want to do yeah. um and it is definitely to do with that it's definitely to do with art because I'm such an emotional person and yeah. I'm an empath and I feel energy and I feel, you know I walk into a room and I can feel energy yeah like, oh where some people don't some people just go everything fine you know like and I, I sometimes absolutely envy those people. Uh, I, yeah, I, I can definitely, definitely think, relate to that. Yeah. But I think there is a certain amount that people also go, oh, I feel a bit, a bit funny here, but never mind. We'll just pretend that it's not happening. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, like, I, I do, sort of, 
bring up the question there that are we all emotional beings but actually some choose to cover it up more than others or some choose to lock out their emotion but or is it just who they truly are I don't, I don't have an answer but I don't know I have a feeling that it's um and and from just things that I've read it's usually because of the blocks that, yeah. they've, that they've built from traumas that they've had you know um of you know walking into a room and their mum and dad having a row or yeah. or uh you know something like that and then they've gone okay well if I just make it happy then and then they and once that person comes in the room they stop fighting and so they they go oh if I walk into a room and I'm happy then they're going to stop fighting you know and so then they bring that to their lives and and then start and then they just block it off block that that place in their mind off so mm -hmm. Uh, yeah and it's all about I mean personally I, I believe in sort of chakras and and the different energy sp spaces up through your through your spine and, and yeah all of that. um and I'm, and I'm looking more into it um because I also think there's no smoke without fire agreed <laughs> agreed there's gotta, be, there's gotta be something in this and I have been a skeptic I have been an atheist so I do have a an analytical brain on it i'm not just like yeah, yeah you're just done clouds <laughs> you know yeah. I mean, as much as i love doing that too yeah i've been in that experience and i and i felt that light and i felt that connection with it with nature and i felt that connection with other beings having no judgment around anything like a like yeah. a tree yeah. um but then i've come away and i've gone wait what was that was that my brain was that this was that, that? you know and yeah but because I've experienced it I'm like no it just it's just that's just the experience that you had and and if it is something scientific yeah so be it but until they can you know it's like with afterlifes if 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 they could prove that we don't have an afterlife then I'd believe that right but they haven't proved it yet yeah as soon as they prove it I'll be like cool science yeah but you know yeah. but there's like, a beauty in not knowing too I think there is there is some there is some beauty in not knowing as well. But I, I wanted to ask you, uh, when we were talking about the yoga before and you're talking about that position and shaking in that position, and then when you brought up that uh, the fire sort of element, do you think there is that element of yoga and also the practice of life as well in, in sitting in that discomfort, that there's such an importance there as well in actually, if you are shaking or something is uncomfortable, to relax into it but maybe even to sit in those sensations as well not just in yoga practices but sometimes like I'm sure many people listening have faced in a lockdown some uncomfortable truths that have come up from that stillness and space that we found that actually you have no choice mm -hmm. but to sit in but sometimes it can be the best thing in the world right yeah but I think with yoga and people being in that shake place mm. is that if they're in that shake place they don't have to be still yeah they don't right. have to be in that place yeah and that's where people are they're constantly doing this so mm. they don't have to sit in that discomfort the discomfort yeah. is in stillness it, yeah but, you know the 100 percent people can't meditate yeah or people who say they can't meditate I'm like okay you can sit still correct you're not in pain you can sit on a chair for 10 minutes yeah, yeah physiologically you can sit right yeah so you can do that <laughs> so or for a minute just yes. a minute you know oh, i can't stop thinking okay we'll just sit here and we'll just just keep thinking it doesn't mean you have to do anything about it <laughs> you know like See what happens it, yeah so that's what you know so i think people stay in the shake because they Agreed. don't want to just that's interesting their body tell them actually what is wrong what you will know? happen if i do stop yeah yeah wow. and have a think it's powerful and, and actually hear and actually listen to what your gut and your intuition and your psyche is saying to you because yeah. so often we do the opposite mm -hmm. and then realize in hindsight that that wasn't the best thing to do you know um or you know everyone go oh, I just knew it I just knew that would happen yeah okay well then why did you not listen because you didn't take enough time because that because you know I've done it with boyfriends all the right. you know it's, it's a perfect example of going like yeah it's not really quite right but you know it's okay but it's it's really nice it's really I'm enjoying myself so yeah, yeah. 
And that little tiny nugget is what you should listen to. <laughs> yeah. It's not really quite right, but it, but it's fine. No, it's not quite right. No, but it's not quite right. And there's a reason for that. But it's um, uncomfortable. It's un- Yeah, it's uncomfortable to go, oh, we have to break up. Yeah. Why? We're having such a good time. I know, but there's just something telling me. And that's the thing, like now, anyone who I date is really in for it because I guess I literally, I'm like, yeah, my gut's just telling me no. Like, I'm, yeah, we're having a great time, but my gut's just telling me, they're like, oh, so you're going to listen to your gut? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but could you, um, what was a hundred, it's been a hundred percent right. Yeah, every time. So right now, you know, from experience, and that's what experience brings you. That's what age right. brings you, is, is the time. It's just, you know, it's just, you've just had more time to have those experiences where you, the experiences of not listening to yourself. If, you're, if you don't meditate and you don't take that time to yeah. be in that uncomfortable space where, where, you, where you have to hear the hard truths of actually what, what you feel your authentic self and what your, what your authentic self, self feels because I mean I'm even coming back now to the the Instagram handstand that you know we see about 50 times a day which is very impressive and and wonderful and they're wearing a beautiful brand of yoga leggings and it's, it's fantastic but you know I really think it is a symbol for how much we all perform at life so mm. much and and try and often I'm finding when I'm teaching breathing, every single time I find myself saying, there's no need to try. You don't need to try to breathe. Yeah. Just breathe. Mm. Because people really go, I'm going to meditate now. And you're like, you don't need to just make your breathing totally effortless. Yeah. But that's the same as singing. Right. It's the same as singing. Um, and there is... I was talking again, talking to this friend about it that, um, and I hadn't actually thought about it until we were talking recently. I said, actually, if you, when you take a breath to speak, you don't go. <gasps> so when I was just doing this, yeah. you, know, if you, actually, <laughs> you actually expel more air and then, yeah. you can't, and then you can't, you don't have enough air to, to you know, to, but I, I, I could talk for like a minute and I haven't even had a breath for ages. Like maybe exactly. now about it I'm thinking oh well maybe I need to take a breath but I don't need to take a breath really because I actually because I need yeah. some here and then I could it's like but you know yeah and that would be like ah uh, yeah uh, I take it <gasps> uh, yeah know. um so so it's so that's it's all connected that's that's what I learned is that it's just all connected 100% the to us as physical beings are connected our breath is connected to how you look at the world. Then how you look at the world affects how the world is and how you, how, how you look at the world in being a breathing entity. Mm. You know, we have this, this thing around this beautiful globe that we have that is being totally, that's being destroyed because yeah. we're so busy being quick yeah. instead of going, but this, it has to breathe. Um, we're you know, suffocating it we're and ourselves, right? Well, we're either doing that or we're holding. Okay. Right. All right. If I just get past this, if I just if I just do that, and that's what I kind of feel like the pandemic has happened now. I think we're all like baited breath. Yeah. We've all taken a breath because the air is cleaner, and we've all gone, oh my goodness, and then we're like, what now? People yeah. don't know what to do, and actually, it's just going, just relax. And I think it's gone on a lot longer than everyone thought. And so that it's like that inhale, people sort of waiting for someone else to tell them to exhale. And they're like, wait, it's still not over. Yeah. I'm still in this space. Mm. Oh, mm. okay. So do I breathe out or do I just stop and wait here? Mm. I don't know. Mm. And it, or breathe out sh- or it's all just shallow. You're right. Well, if I just short, shallow breaths. Doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so, vulnerable. Yeah. And it's vulnerable, but I. Yeah, how lovely that everyone's going through it together. Uh, exactly, exactly. And, and I think. Everyone, sorry, fin- what are you saying? Well, that everyone, everyone has, in some way, had that vulnerability. Have yeah. has had to 
to say to someone at some point, yeah, I'm actually not having a good day today. Mm. you know and they're able to do that because also they're not around hundreds of people they're not around loads of people it's like you know we have to have these bubbles because we have to be mindful and and, uh, of of others and and I think people are being more vulnerable with their close circle yeah they're they're more able to be because they're not busy Mm, yeah people who don't really know them they don't have to be themselves they don't have to be authentically themselves but you know and that's also why the suicide rate is is so terrible because yeah. you know because it wasn't it's not about the pandemic it's about before the pandemic that people yeah. couldn't be vulnerable and so therefore in the pandemic it that was the that you know if we prevented it before something like this we wouldn't have a pandemic yeah we wouldn't have a mental health crisis we wouldn't yeah. have a pandemic because actually if people did think about being vulnerable with each other then then they would be more compassionate and then it would then follow on to animals and then there wouldn't be a bat that was eaten, you know, like yeah. it's, it's, it's a cycle. It's a real, just a, a circle of, 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 you know, that word suffocation is I think so prevalent seeing as, you know, coronavirus is a rep- respiratory disease. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't it, it's totally like ironic. Yeah. Like what, <laughs> Uh, it's just ridiculous yeah yeah and and, and hilarious and brilliant yes okay. like the universe is like having a joke with us uh, well but yeah yeah it's yeah. like well also I mean I, I I say to my friends it's like the fire you know the fires in Australia yeah where a billion animals were killed a billion uh, it's just and disastrous that wasn't enough for us to go we're suffocating the planet yeah we are humans are doing this yeah so the universe just went okay <laughs> we'll suffocate you. you i'm gonna take out a few of you yeah and suffocate you and wow. make you feel like you can't breathe yeah through not just through the through the getting the virus but through grief yeah. and through uh, stress yeah. and through all of these things that yeah. you will have to learn to work through and find a way to deal and to and to to be kinder to one another i think i think this is the perfect time to bring up the astralin collective you know and how how that came about and your the birthing the birthing of of that the astralin collective we're still in the conception (laughs) we're in it we're in the sort of still in the pregnancy stage um I mean, I mean, I definitely feel like it's been born having attended two two ceremonies. <laughs> maybe that's just me, but yeah. Uh, but well, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's maybe it's in fourth trimester. We haven't, yeah, we haven't quite gone <laughs> exactly. through, the, but it's more like the the moment oh when when it's like the body is forming. You know, that I yeah, I see, yeah, yeah. And then it's like suddenly it like you get skin. As maybe it just has fingernails right now. It's just got the fingernails. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, so we, um, I have been, it, because of this situation, I mean, I took a year year or two or three out after Top Hat because I had the same sort of issues um, yeah. that I've been having with patriarchy in the system. Um, and, um, and then I came back um, and was doing a job with people and I was one of the leads and um, the ensemble were being just not in the job, they were being treated well in the job, but they were then trying to go for other jobs and the, the way that they were being treated by the casting process. Yeah. I just was like, I have to do something about this. If I'm going to be in this business, I have to do something. So I right. then sort of went to equity meetings and I then became an equity counselor and, yeah. you know, did that for a couple of years. And with the counselor job or the counselor position it's more about what happens in the union rather than what happens outside what the union does for the right union. um right. so so i'm now sort of less involved obviously because i'm in the us but mm. um, um and and you know everyone sort of makes those comparisons of uk and us and how yeah of course and actually it's it's not it, it i mean the, the laws are different for yeah. union workers um, yeah. but because of the because of society and the and the hierarchy yeah. um uh it um it's still trying to do exactly what it did in the uk of you know 
where they abolished the union's power. Yeah. Um, but I still believe there's safety in numbers, you know, and yeah. uh, and that's because I know I felt that connection. Yeah, with a group of people in a in a spiritual setting. Yeah. where we've all done something and it's made this incredible energy mm. um and i i do think that the more holistic and spiritual people are showing up a lot more now because even though you know and, and going back to the instagram thing with the, with the yoga you know even though um there is that side of it there's also the side of people just going okay this is the it's like David Attenborough is on Instagram now. Yeah, he it's, he's, it's amazing. But he he's the last person who wants to be on Instagram because of course. what the it's owned by Facebook who exploit their workers in you know who then it then goes on to the millionaires and the billionaires and the trillionaires in the US and and yeah. it's all feeding that conglomerate which is right. what he doesn't want to be but no. but he realizes that now the masses are engaged in that yeah so sometimes you you have you have to if you can't beat them join them in a in a way it's like to, to tell an important I mean, story yeah it's and also you know i mean the buddha said about leading from within you know right right or yeah. leading from behind you go okay so powerful. This is where you want to go cool we're gonna we're here but let's steer you steer you in the right yeah way. um and um you know that's what happened with the pandemic and George Floyd, you know? Yeah. I mean, again, that that horrendous hashtag yeah. about breath. Yeah. It's like, it's like how many more times do we need to hear it before, yeah. and how many more people need to die before yeah. we get it? Or, yeah. or, or, or people, or, hum or um, beings, you know, any animals or trees, <laughs> whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, so, so, I've always kind of been involved in recently have been in, mm. in not involved but just had an idea of this utopian society of all these artists being yeah. together and it being a community and us you know coming together and 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 almost I don't want to say bringing down but bringing bringing together the business and the artistry yeah. I have this utopian desire yeah. to have these things brought together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm set up this business, Australian Collective, because I want people, you know, in this business that we have right now in the pandemic of online classes, yeah. um, uh, people doing online classes, I don't want them to be exploited. I don't want some businessman who doesn't understand artists and also knows what artists can and can't do mm -hmm. take taking a model and just going I can I can pay you this much and I can make this much you yeah, know like a, a, a can of baked beans in it yeah in like a product exactly yeah. and we you know and and that is also the thing that happened in in theater for me was that I I started saying to these people I'm not a product I'm a person yeah I'm not a product that you can just make you know put a, a, you know I don't know super glue back together you yeah a new, a new sticker a new flavor or yeah or a new battery <laughs> like it doesn't yeah. work like that mm. you have to nurture a person yeah um and, and listen so, right and listen yeah actually and, listen and, and let them be heard so yeah, so I I set it up because I didn't want anyone. I also didn't want people to be undervaluing themselves because I value them so highly. Yeah. I value art so highly um, because it's a way that's not spiritual yeah. to make people feel something. Yeah, you know, because I'm I have that spiritual side. I have that mystical, magical side that I that I believe in. Also, I also know that it's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. Um, and they feel everyone feels in a different way. Yeah. Um, because you never 
no one can feel the way that you feel about anything and I can't feel the way that you feel it we're just all totally feeling in different ways whether that's in our physical bodies in our mental bodies you know all of that so um with these classes and events I'm just trying to sort of bring a bit of theatre to to uh the end to 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 people's homes but also connect it with that more mystical spiritual holistic not I mean it's not necessarily spiritual no I will say that it it is spiritual because that is the reason I called it the Stralen Collective is because it's my it's my tools it's what I did to make to get through life yeah and to survive actually you know and I feel like there are so many people who are really surviving instead of thriving because they don't have these they don't they just don't know about it so it's so it's an education as well but these people who I have uh are some of the most experienced people and I'm celebrating each one of their uniqueness so someone who might connect to um Scarlet for instance you know we're sisters but we're very fundamentally different yeah you know and we have different ideas on different tools of you know not not massively different now but like of course you know but we we do have different ways of looking at things yeah and and someone might connect with her and someone might connect with me um and it's about celebrating everybody we can all we can all be doing it um and there are a lot of people who want to learn it not only just in the industry, but people, you know, or people who are aspiring to be in the industry, but also just, just people in, in general. Yeah. You know, they all want to know how to feel. And, and our, our job is apparently this glamorous, you know, thing. <laughs> it's, it's less of the glamour and more of the fact it's, it's, we are privileged in the way that we get to feel yeah. more than anybody else. Yeah. Because that's our job. <laughs> yeah. That is what we choose to do. And that's yeah. what we, you know, some people are better at it than others because of right. their stories, because of their journeys, because of because they want to, they want to help people understand different people's stories. And that's all it is. Yeah, I mean that beautifully rounds us back to your Native American music playing in the background. That tri- I mean what is what is the origins of storytelling, right? It's those indigenous tribes um painting right on, on walls. walls. Uh yeah and you know making this incredible music not to sell as many tickets as they can at the London Palladium but just to pass down stories connect. to generations and connect. well to connect to what is what is important and that yeah. is our connection to the material world because that's what we're living in yeah and we have to take care of it and yeah it's it's um you 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 sparked something in me then about about you know the collective that's why I called it a collective and you and I don't you know you'll notice that there's a lot of collectives come out yeah. in the last six months I as soon as I started looking at the word collective I can't stop can't stop seeing it you know yeah. the creative collective the this collective the that collective yeah. the Australian collective you know because we're all going we need to come together in order yeah. to you know which I've always been saying <laughs> but uh, you know not yeah. always but like in the last seven years yeah so, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and 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 it it all is just ties in with being you're working collectively with your mind and your body and I've been lucky that I've been able to connect to my body through training yeah you know that's it, when you feel connected to your body is when you feel connected to the earth and then you feel the earth connected to you and that's the power of the you know you feel the power of all of that um and it can be it can be magical when when those moments happen. Yeah, it really is. And 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 I want other people to be able to experience that. Yeah, uh, collective consciousness is uh, something I've been looking into recently. There's incredible research, and actually, you know, we're so lucky. We're actually alive in this day and age that so many people would love to see where they can actually look at what's really going on in this collective consciousness and they know now that when people did pray and sing together Mm. that actually physiologically you know it connects them 
to something outside of themselves, to each other, to themselves. It creates coherence between your heart and your brain. There's so many things and it, it's the power of it is enormous, but it, it all goes around space and stopping and taking space and time and silence, right? Which mm -hmm. is that what people are struggling with in the Western world now, I think. Well, yes. And also I think that there's been a, there's been a, a, a with different people and their fear mm. um, guiding them. That's yeah. where it has the connections lost. When you're feeling fearful of a God, a thing, then you're not seeing it as yourself. You're not seeing it as connected to you. Yeah. You know, and anything you're fearful of, you're creating. It's the yeah. fear that you have, you know, and, and that also, you know, that came from language and power, you know, power was a big thing, you know, tribes and, yeah, you know, uh, it was all about who had the most power, had the most land and who survived. It wasn't about actually about the greed. It was yeah. about survival. survival. And, and so, it, and because they didn't have the, the uh, cognitive, more cognitive brain by that point, you yeah. know, um, it was about like, oh, you're, you're against us, you know, not like yeah. come, on, come together, you yeah. know, um, because we're fearful of you because we don't understand you. Yes. Because we didn't give enough time, you know, and, and so religion then turned into something or you know in in some instances in in other instances it's still the beautiful thing that is just let's all just be kind to one another and help each other and have compassion and yeah. non-judgment yeah. and non-violence and all the things that are in the Upanishads which is where yoga comes from you know where um, Buddhism comes from and Jainism it's yeah. all about just um doing the good for the greater for the whole for the collective um, yeah for the for the collective good yeah. um and you know we we slowly are trying to sort of uh, iron out what what was got what was um misconstrued and mistranslated you know yeah um, yeah, yeah yeah by people who just went oh i don't really know what this means so i'm just going to write this down yeah <laughs> um, it means that we don't like gays you know it's like yeah no it doesn't no. quite mean that. <laughs> you know what this person this person was trying to say was trying to explain the experience that they had had in the only way they knew how yeah that's yeah. all you know that's how I look at any kind of scripture it's yeah. that people have experienced these these things and have and have translated it into speech in the way that they own the only way they knew how and we've taken it literally yeah because because we didn't know what we didn't know that either because we didn't have the internet and we didn't have cameras and we didn't have yeah. you know instagram you know yes, with people we going, didn't know i just experienced this there yeah. you go i just experienced this or or even yeah. seeing it being experienced yeah you know yeah seeing people walking on water or whatever yeah you know, yeah yeah Really, it probably wasn't that he felt like he was walking on water because he was in this space where he was connected to yeah. himself and life and the world yeah. all together and he felt like he was walking on water that sounds yeah. more and more you know yeah transcendent more state rea yeah. or more realistic yeah. as well yeah, now yeah, that yeah. we know about gravity and we know about the planets and we know yeah. about all this stuff now yeah and 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 the fact that it's the fact that it's it, it, that people aren't taking that moment to just go what is the information we have mm. you know and that's another thing about Instagram that you know th th not another thing is, is a thing that could be a negative about things like right. that is that people don't do their research right it's are you seeing you're seeing but are you looking are you hearing but you're really listening <laughs> and there's so much stuff and you know this whole fake news thing you know mm. it's like yes, yeah there is you're right Donald Trump actually which yeah. I wish someone would say yes you're right but it's on both sides yeah so 
let's you can you know your idea of it is is not right yeah. but you are right fundamentally there is fake stuff going around for the for the benefit of other people yeah. in order to benefit the government to benefit the billionaires to benefit because they can pay for it yeah because, right. because, they don't, because they're terrified of losing their hundred million dollar house yeah because that's what they have yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they experience connection. Yeah. And how sad for them yeah, is all absolutely. I Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. yes, I could do with more money just to be feeling like I was secure in myself, you know, and having a house and just a settled yeah. mind or, or, or whatever. But, you know, these people who need all this other stuff is because they don't, they can't connect to anything. Yeah. And it, And it's it's understandable and it's just a, it's just um you know it's just a it's a it's a it's a block it's a chakra yeah. block yeah. somewhere they've been blocked yeah because they've not been allowed it or they've been some kind of fear something's happened where they've had a toy taken away from them or something and it's yeah. affected them so badly that they that they're like no I need all the toys because if I don't keep this toy then I'm not going to have a toy and that's yeah. not going to make me happy you know it's so it's so fundamental psychology you know psych 101 yeah. absolutely absolutely and I, I think it's so um inspiring and it's empowering that you you're holding this space now for people to explore those demons or those sort of those vulnerabilities that perhaps they they don't know if they could explore in their own homes or their own you know, uh, their own tribes that have well, been put in, in place yeah, for them. in the theatre community, in the, in yeah. the show business community. Especially, it's, yeah. I mean, it's becoming more, you know, with Gwyneth Paltrow and whoever else who's, who, who have been highlighting it and, and celebrating it for so long. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is definitely the time for us to be doing it. Absolutely, because, yeah. You know, the also it's not just the demons that you hear but it's the it's the light as well yeah it's the yeah light of going you know you might get a, an epiphany if yeah. you just sit still and go oh i'm gonna do that you know and it Listen. might be to do with the thing that you're doing it might not be yeah. completely you know yeah like for me it might not be uh, not the same as me where it was like oh i don't know if i want to do this anymore and that yeah. that for me was a dark shadow because right. i was like this is so big, it's so big that it, and it's so overwhelming. But for someone else, it might be like, I don't want to do this anymore. I yeah. want to do this, yeah. I want to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, and, yeah. you know, because I suffer from depression, I went the, uh, that way because my brain has been traumatized and my synapses have been, uh, it, it's, it is yeah. physical, you know, the trauma that happens yeah. to your brain, uh, what you are fed through your eyes and through your ears. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. All of that is what can affect you so negatively, which is your brain scientifically can can break your brain. Yeah, absolutely. So what you what you do um, inhale, ingest, intake is so important. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And I and and that's why again coming back, it's like, so why are we all flying around the world all the time? Because yeah. what is most important is our breath yeah and we're ruining the we're ruining the air yeah oh it's like what yeah what we're not listening what? not listening yeah so but it's happening it's gonna it's, ha well yeah. we have had to she's gone yeah, yeah you you're gonna ru you're you're gonna have you like it's like we were all having the tantrum on the shop you know, on the shop yeah. floor yeah and she's gone i'm just gonna leave you here and i'm gonna let you be look scared that I've yeah. gone yeah because I'm not I'm not I'm not doing this anymore she's 100%. taking it her hand she's gone I'm not doing it anymore yeah sort yourself out come back when you're ready to apologize <laughs> yeah absolutely oh, come back when you're ready to apologize yeah that's what the mother earth mo 100%. mother Gaia the universe has said to us so yeah come, come back when you're ready to apologize and give me a cup of tea and a, yeah <laughs> and, and a custard cup. cream <laughs> and a custard cream yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, listen, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I have one more question for you because the, when I've done your women's circles, I, I've always come away with such a sense of empowerment of just 
other females lifting each other up and holding space. And so I guess I just wanted to ask you in, in a nutshell, in, in like one sentence, what yeah. is female empowerment to you that you know last night especially we talked about this inner goddess and and your goddess and what does that mean to you what's the essence of that well I trained to be a doula and I learned the physiology of birth and if I could give any advice to any woman it would be learn about the physiology of birth because yeah. it is one of the most incredible things that happens that is a chemical happening in your in this body that we have right. and it's it's um a power that um that men don't have yeah it's our it's our magical it's our it's our superpower yeah is to create life in our bodies and expel it safely and we are built to do that yeah and and uh, not only our bodies but our minds and our our brains are able to tell our bodies we, it works all together um and and the power from seeing a woman give birth yeah. um not in the flesh i haven't done it in the flesh but yeah. from seeing different videos of of good of nice births you know yeah. births that are that are you, generally births births are good when women feel safe yeah and or protected or or just allowed to be a woman yeah uh, you know you just let me be a woman I'm a this is what my body was made to do I don't not meaning everyone has to do it no it's what our bodies physically are made to do that's why we have periods that's why you know and then it goes on to my female empowerment of the fact we a very young age bleed every month and that's terrifying yeah. and we get through it and we talk to each other and we have different hormones and we have acne and we have these things that men don't have you know yeah. I'm sure they have other things that are equally bad for them but when I realized that about women was when I went I am equal yeah and we are all equal and there needs to be a balance. And sometimes you have to bring up the balance. You know, sometimes yeah. the strong, the people on, you know, it's like lifting someone up onto a, a wall. Mm. I want to try and lift as many women with my power, the, the, with, the, with the power that I have, which isn't a lot. Sometimes mentally I'm a mess. Right. And, vulnerable and I need some and I need my women behind me who you know yeah. might at that point be strong and say no come on we can do this together it's collective again right <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah. know so that's also you know uh, and having three sisters um wanting to do that for them and wanting to do that for my niece and for the women that I have in my life just yeah. purely because it's it it'll only happen if we do it together um and and then and then the men can join you know yes. once we're at this uh, once we're at this level yeah. at the moment they're going mm, what are you doing you know and we're going <laughs> oh, we're level because because you've to, all together been going no women can't do this women can't. together they've been fearful of the fact that women can birth children yeah keep the human race alive we keep the human race alive, not them. Yeah. We do. Our bodies, our physical, you yeah. know, and this is why with science and cloning and all of that is, is, is scary because it means yeah. that we are no, no longer necessary. Neither of us are. Right. Um, but cognitive feeling and consciousness is what we bring to yeah. the earth and the earth needs that. So... Yeah that's a very long sentence but um, <laughs> no, that's how I feel. it's I, about I think that. you explained it brilliantly no honestly it, it was fantastic the circle of life yeah and the, the collective I think is it's such an incredible note to finish on and I I can't thank you enough and every time I speak to you the amount of insights that come up are, are just amazing and I'll of course put links to the, the conscious collective so anyone listening can just click and be led straight to it in the show notes and go and check out all of summer's amazing the um, collective. all of the the Australian collected of course but all of summer's amazing yoga classes and all of um 
your community's incredible yeah. classes yeah, well, well. It, and also we just want it to grow you yeah know, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not saying I've birthed this beautiful child Come yeah see. yeah yeah it's like this is what I mean by about being still in the in that pregnant stage yeah because I need people to to nurture it and help with that and, yeah and get it you know and, and work at work together it's like you know nourishing it, it yeah it's, it's just the like beginning nourishing that that little that little amazing thing that is ha that's that's been created out of love yeah you know absolutely. that's what babies are made out of yeah as well 100%. and life yeah <laughs> yes thank you so much honestly it's, it's been a joy and such a pleasure and yeah thank you thank you so much